Okay, I'm going to briefly look at uh, pair production and annihilation. A uh, very straightforward topic. Um, firstly, we'll look at pair production. Okay, pair production occurs when a gamma ray suddenly turns into matter and antimatter. So, for example, an electron positron pair could turn into anything, it could be a proton, antiproton, and so forth, okay? So a gamma ray, a very high energy gamma ray, produces electron-positron pair. Now when this happens, we know that the frequency of this is sufficient to give it enough energy to produce matter. In order for charge and lepton number to be conserved, we always have to have a pair with pair production. But the mass of these two things are the same. Now when we look at this, it's important we remember our formula sheet. Now our formula sheet gives us the rest energy of our electron. So, using Einstein's E equals mc squared, energy and matter we know are related, and the rest energy of our electron, the energy required to produce that matter, equals 0.51 mega electron volts. So if we go back to our original problem, we see we've got an electron and a positron being produced by this gamma ray. Now if you look on your formula sheet, you'll see the rest energy of the electron is 0.51 mega electron volts. The rest energy of the, proton, of the positron is exactly the same. Now we know that the energy of our gamma ray, E is HF, again in our formula sheet. Now if I want to know the minimum frequency of gamma ray required to produce the electron-positron pair, I need to make the energy of the electron and positron equal to the energy of the gamma ray in order to find out the frequency. However, this is in electron volts and not joules, and I need to be in joules. So, I would need to make this in joules equal HF. So, I'd have to add them together and say 2 times 0.51 mega electron volts. So it's times 10 to the 6. Now that's the total amount of mega of electron volts, but I need it to be in joules. So you'll remember I times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 to get it into joules. And that equals HF, because now we're all in joules. So to find frequency, I simply move H to the other side and divide the whole thing by H. And that enables me to calculate the frequency. So using my calculator, I can say 2 um, Two times 0.51 times 10 to the 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Divide that by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, which is Planck's constant, and that gives me 2.46 times 10 to the 20. That equals 2.46 times 10 to the 20 hertz, because it's frequency. So that there is the minimum frequency of gamma ray required to be able to produce an electron-positron pair. Obviously, if it was a proton-antiproton pair, then the energy would be dramatically higher, and so there, therefore would the frequency. Now then, another thing that can happen with matter and antimatter is annihilation. So annihilation This happens when matter and antimatter come together. Now matter and antimatter cannot occupy the same space in the same time, so they will annihilate each other. So for example, we can use uh, an electron and positron pair again, but it could be a proton, antiproton, whatever. So if we've got an electron and the positron, now if they come together, the matter and the antimatter, what will happen is they will cease to exist and you'll get two gamma rays given off. 
Now the gamma rays will be identical and they will carry all of the rest energy of these two away with them. Now then, these problems could, could be rather complex if these had kinetic energy prior to their collision. If they've got kinetic energy prior to meeting, then I need to add that, whatever it is, to their rest energy using a half mv squared, which is the kinetic energy of a particle or anything. Now, in this case, I'm going to say that the electron and the positron have zero kinetic energy when they meet. So the rest energy is going to be converted into these two gamma rays. Now, obviously, the rest energy of my electron is 0.51 MeV. And the rest energy of my positron is 0.51 MeV. And the energy will be added together and then divided by 2. So rather than adding this to this and then dividing it by 2, I'll just say, well, this electron here is going to produce that gamma ray, and this positron here produces that gamma ray. So now I don't need to think about anything here, and I just need to think this electron produces that gamma ray, so I need to make all of this energy into that gamma ray and find out the frequency. So very simply then, the electron's got 0.51 times 10 to the 6 electron volts. Times that by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and that's what it's got in joules. Make that equal to HF, and now I know what my frequency is, because I can just bring H to the other side. That will give me my frequency which will be 0.51 times 10 to the 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 equals 1.23 times 10 to the 20. So that equals 1.23 times 10 to the 20 hertz. Now, that's exactly what I would expect because it's half of the answer from before. Okay, so that there is the energy from this electron, it's rest energy, and when it ceases to exist and it produces this gamma ray, that would be the frequency of the gamma ray. This could be made far more complex by giving these very high kinetic energies first. In order for the kinetic energy to have any real relevance to the final answer, the kinetic energy would have to be of the order of 10 to the 7, even 10 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, in order for a half mv squared to have enough relevance to alter the answer. Um, if that were the case, all you would do is, if for example, you're working this out, if one of them was stationary and one of them was moving at say 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, you could use a half mv squared and add that to the total energy, but then you would need to divide it by 2 and make that equal to hf when calculating the frequency of a gamma ray. So, for example, if we had an electron travelling at 2 times 10 to the 8 metres per second, and it collided with a stationary positron, we could no longer say that the energy of this turns into a gamma ray and the energy of this turns into a gamma ray because the energies now are slightly different. The rest energies are the same, but this one's got kinetic energy also. Now we're going to assume that there's no what's called mass dilation, so we're going to assume that the mass of the electron is exactly the same as it always is, which is 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So in order to calculate the frequency of these two gamma rays this time, we need to add up all of the energy. So, we'll do rest energy first. So we've got 2 times 0.51 times 10 to the 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And that gives us the total energy, the rest energy of our electron and positron pair. So we've got 2 times 0.51 times 10 to the 6 
times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and that equals 1.63 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. Now that there is the rest energy in joules of these two. But we also need to consider the kinetic energy of this electron here. So the kinetic energy equals a half mv squared, which is 0.5 times mass of an electron on your formula sheet is 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 times v squared, which is 2 times 10 to the 8 squared, so it's 4 times 10 to the 16. Now we'll put that into our calculator to work out the kinetic energy of this electron. So it's 2 times 10 to the 8 squared times 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 times a half and that equals 1.82 times 10 to the minus 14. So we can see the kinetic energy of the electron is just a tenth of the rest energy of the electron and positron pair. Now because it's going so fast, it's now becoming significant. So if we add these together, oops, we can see the total. is 1.812 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. Now, that's the total energy available to the two gamma rays. So the two gamma rays, if they've got 1.812 times 10 to the minus 13 joules available, we would need to divide that by 2 and make that equal to HF. So if we divide our answer by 2, which is 9 times 10 to the minus 14. So we could say 9 times 10 to the minus 14 equals HF. Move the H to the other side. So frequency equals 9 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by H, which will give us the frequency of our electron, which is. 1.37 times 10 to the 20. So, if you look back at our last answer, you'll see the frequency is slightly higher because, because before it was 1.23 times 10 to the 20, now it's 1.37 times 10 to the 20, because our electron had some kinetic energy when it collided with our positron and that energy must be added to the sum split in half and then made equal to HF to work out the frequency of the two identical gamma rays.